This this is the Stephen A. Smith Show Podcast. I'm Stephen A. Welcome to the latest edition of the Stephen A. Smith Show. Jam-packed show coming your way today. I got a lot of stuff on my mind. Lonzo Ball, I will be getting into that story. It is unavoidable. And if some of the reports are accurate, it's inexcusable. Inexcusable. It better not be a shred of damn truth to the fact that he needed a second workout because he wasn't in shape for the first. That's a bad sign. And if you're the Los Angeles Lakers, and is any truth to that, got to take that into consideration. Number two overall picking up, coming NBA draft. A week from Thursday. Damn right you need to consider it. We'll be talking about that as the show progresses today, along with De'Aaron Fox out of Kentucky, Josh Jackson out of Kansas, both of them having worked out with the Lakers. And I'll let you know what I've been hearing from my sources inside of NBA circles as to the dilemma faced by the Los Angeles Lakers and what they may or may not do with this number two overall pick in this upcoming NBA draft. We will absolutely positively get into that. As the show progresses today, little NFL talk with Odell Beckham Jr. We definitely got to get into that because I think that's much ado about some things and then in other ways, much ado about nothing. I'll get into all of that as well as the show progresses today. But the first order of business, because I was off the airwaves yesterday, traveling back, couldn't get back to New York unless I caught one flight. I mean, I'm back. I'm out west. I'm back east. I'm getting ready to go back out west. Come back out west. It's all over. I'm all over the place. But I was at the NBA Finals. I saw Kevin Durant put on a show. I saw Steph Curry give a helping hand. I saw LeBron James and Kyrie and J.R. Smith not be enough. I didn't see what I wanted to nor expected to see from Kevin Love. And in the end, we got what most folks predicted. The Golden State Warriors are the NBA champions. Taking the Cleveland Cavaliers out in five games. And what you peel from that is that, you know, that 28-4 to run where Golden State just blitzed you, this is what they do. They can hit shots from all over the place. They're that lethal. And I know I was on first take yesterday live from Oakland. And I told the lovely, wonderful Mrs. Wanda Durant, I'm sorry. Because she thought I was entirely too harsh on her son. Fair enough. Fair enough. Last July 4th, when Kevin Durant announced via the Players' Tribune that he was taking his talents to the Bay Area and joining the Golden State Warriors, I'm not going to lie to you. Thought it was a travesty. I'm not going to lie to you now. Still feel it's a travesty. But only because I'm thinking about competition. People act like we were saying Kevin Durant couldn't play. Or Kevin Durant, you know, is going to ride the gravy train. Nobody was saying that. Matter of fact, we were saying the complete opposite. He's so great. He's so sensational. He's so phenomenal that it's not fair. It just wasn't fair. And as far as I'm concerned, everything that I've seen from these Golden State Warriors, courtesy of Kevin Durant joining the Splash Brothers and the rest of that crew, that's exactly how it looked. Unfair. Unfair against Portland. Unfair against Utah. And clearly unfair once Jaja Gabor, a.k.a. Jaja Pajulia, put his foot under Kawhi Leonard. And against the Cleveland Cavaliers, let's be real, we expected better. And we didn't get it. But here's the thing. I got news for all of y'all. If you're expecting me to go off about LeBron James, you tuned into the wrong show. The brother averaged 33, 12, and 10. He averaged a triple-double in the NBA Finals. He showed up in the big games and balled. And he wasn't just padding stats or padding numbers. He was playing. The Cleveland Cavaliers were within five with over four minutes left in the game. This dude didn't just go out there and pad numbers. He was balling. Kyrie tweaked his knee a little bit to begin the fourth quarter. He wasn't the same. What are you looking for? You're looking for Kevin Love to step up. He was nowhere to be found. Shot two attempts from the field. An abysmal offensive performance. 
Not like Kevin Love. And I think he's better than people give him credit for. But I'm here to tell you right now, and I'm just going to say it, and I'm just going to get this out of the way because we've got Tyron Lue talking about how he doesn't believe there's that big, that wide of a gap between the Warriors and the Cleveland Cavaliers. You might disagree with him. I have no problem with him saying it. But I got to tell you something. If I'm the Cleveland Cavaliers, I do everything I can to get my hands on Carmelo Anthony right now. I do everything that I can if I'm LeBron James to get Carmelo Anthony to waive that no trade clause. Now, I know there's a better option than Paul George, but I just have a hard time believing that Larry Bird and the Indiana Pacers, or shall I say the Indiana Pacers, not Larry Bird, the Indiana Pacers are going to trade Paul George within the division to the Cleveland Cavaliers. I just have a hard time believing that. But Carmelo Anthony, I'm entertaining that. And I got to tell y'all something right now. And I'm here to tell you, that 28-4 run that you saw going to State go on, don't tell me that's happening with Carmelo Anthony in the same uniform as LeBron James and Kyrie Irving. That ain't happening. See, at times, there are certain moments where it's just about that dog in you. You got to step out and step forward and put the world on notice. Yeah, you got yours. Let me get mine. LeBron and Durant were doing that against one another. Kyrie and Steph were doing that against one another. The Kevin Love factor was where it dissipated. When he played well in game three, Cleveland balled, even though they blew a lead. When he played well in game four, they won. When the 13 three-pointers in the first half and the 49 points in the first quarter and the 86 points in the first half when NBA Finals record along with them 24 three-pointers in the game, 23 free throws in the first quarter, 22 free throws in the first quarter. Kevin Love was playing. But in that closeout game, he just didn't have it. And I'm here to tell you right now, that's just not happening with Melo. Not with Melo with LeBron James and Kyrie as teammates. If I'm the Cleveland Cavaliers, I prioritize getting Carmelo Anthony. Stop this nonsense. And the disrespect for Carmelo Anthony needs to stop. Is Carmelo Anthony a great leader? No. His record doesn't show that because he hasn't won. Is Carmelo, does Carmelo Anthony hold the ball too long and all of this other stuff? Yes, he does. Would any of those things be an issue with LeBron James as his teammate? Absolutely not. It is time for this disrespect towards Carmelo Anthony to end. This dude at age 32, 6'8", 240, can score from anywhere. And what do you think it's going to take? to beat the Golden State Warriors. Defense, who the hell you think can stop them? Did you not see Kevin Durant? Did you not see what he has done? Do you not see the surreal, sensational, mega, ultra scorer that this dude is and what he could do? He'd have had 50 if Steph Curry and Klay Thompson and them had given him the ball in the last three minutes. He was unstoppable. No matter who was guarding them. It's time we wake up, y'all. The remedy to Golden State has to be on the offensive end of the floor. Because you're not stopping them defensively. Just get over it. It's not happening. You're listening to the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Your boy... What do you want to say to him now? I'm, I'm going to back up here. If I had a mic, I would drop it. <laughs> <laughs> well, listen, first of all, you have a right. Say you're sorry. I'm still the mama. I'm always. 
For you. For you. For you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. There you go. You're the best too today. I'm sorry. It's the best. For you. For you. See, that was Wanda Durant yesterday on First Take with yours truly, along with Max Kellerman and Molly Karam. Uh, Wanda Durant, the wonderful Wanda Durant, the mother of Kevin Durant, was on the show. She showed up. She told me. Uh, She was going to be there the second her son won the championship. So I knew what I was in for. Let me say this because I was gone, obviously, with my mother's passing and what have you. I I thanked so many people. She was one of the other people I needed to thank. Uh, When I showed back up to work last week, um, I was outside. I was inside the green room for ESPN and outside the door was Wanda Durant waiting for me. Gave me a big hug and just let me know that she loved me and, she and the NBA moms would be there for me, as they have always been. Uh, they're so they're so wonderful. They're always they've always been great to me. Uh, but she felt that I was a bit harsh on her son because I called it the the weakest move I had seen by a superstar, and obviously that just brewed a shrapnel of criticism that was aimed in his direction. So I apologize for that because you know she's his mama, and 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 she if she feels I was harsh, then damn it, I was harsh. Okay. I mean, I'm just, it's just the truth. But I stand by what my rationale was. And that's this simple. Kevin Durant is so great, the conclusion was a foregone one. You know, I, I'm right for a change, picking an NBA Finals for the first time in six years, for crying out loud, okay? But, I mean, I, what do I deserve, a cookie? Who, the, who didn't know Golden State was going to win? And it's all because he arrived. And... In the aftermath of the Game 5 loss in the NBA Finals, y'all, I'm in the arena, and the Cleveland Cavaliers, with everybody that I spoke to, they weren't even mad. They didn't like losing. But they literally, I mean, LeBron, Kyrie, and all the other guys, they didn't like it at all. But, ladies and gentlemen, if you saw them, they weren't even heartbroken. Because their whole mentality is, They had to stack the deck in order to beat us. It ain't like they came back with their crew and we came back with our crew and this happened. Those dudes went out and got the second best play on the planet. That's what they needed to do to stack the deck in order to knock us off. That was Cleveland's attitude. Yeah, they're champions. Yeah, they're the reigning defending champions now and they're the best team in the league. But Cleveland's mentality was like, yo, what did you expect us to do? We did all we could. Look at them. Look what they went out and did. Two back the back to back appearances in the NBA Finals. NBA Championship. Best shooter and reigning two time league MVP as their leader. The best shooting backcourt in the history of basketball. And they still had to go out and get the second best player on the planet to stop us. That's Cleveland's mentality, y'all. That's how Kyrie and LeBron, even JR and those guys feel. JR dropped 25. LeBron averaged a triple double. In games three and four, Kyrie Irving averaged 39. And they still lost. That's where, Cle- that's where Cleveland's at with this. So to me, everything that I said was validated. But in terms of Mama Durant saying I was a bit harsh, I'll take that. I'll take anything from her because she's wonderful. Mama Shaq, Mama Wade, Mama Allen as Ray Allen's mom, and, you know, Patrick Beverly's mom, and the list goes on and on. These are wonderful Derek Fisher's mom. These are wonderful, wonderful women. Damn it, if I'm right, I'm still wrong if they say I'm wrong. Because I love them, and I don't want to I don't want to upset them. So if they said I'm wrong, and Wanda Durant said I needed to say I was sorry, then damn it, I said it. I'm sorry. For her. I'll do that. <laughs> to the calls we go at 866-729-ESPN. That's 866-729-3776. By the way, I'm going to get into a uh, – and I'm going to throw out this question before we – you know, we actually, I'm not going to give it to you now, but it's a question about Floyd Money Mayweather, Conor McGregor, Canelo Alvarez, and Triple G. I'm going to ask you a question about those two fights coming up. And I want answers, but not this second. To the phones we go. Alonzo, you're live with Stephen A. Talk to me. Hey Stephen, how you doing, man? How you I'm, doing? I'm, I'm I'm glad that you're back, man. I'm sorry about your mom, man. Thank you. You know, I, it's, it's funny that I, I say this, man. I missed your voice, uh, even though you get annoyed me sometimes. <laughs> but 
But here, here well, I annoyed I her. I certainly annoyed my mom. I can tell you that. <laughs> but, but I'm serious, man. I really missed your voice, man, when you were gone. But anyway, um, me and some of my friends, man, we always had this argument about LeBron and Michael Jordan. And just like I told them, and help me out with this, Michael Jordan never had to beat four Hall of Famers. He never had to beat two head coaches and plus uh, a finals MVP player to win a championship. So this notion that Michael Jordan is far better than LeBron whoa, 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 James. Sorry, stop, 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 stop right there. You can't say the finals MVP player because he was always the finals MVP. Well, he never had to play. He, he never had to beat four MVP, MVP players. Uh, well, well, let, well, 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 let me come back four at you. Hall of Famers. Hold on, Lonzo. Well, let, let, me, let me get back at you because I see where you're going. When he when he beat the Lakers, Magic and others were on there, but that's fair enough because it wasn't the Showtime Lakers. Portland was considered very, very formidable with Terry Porter and Clyde Drexler and, and Duckworth and Robinson and all of those boys. Phoenix had Barkley, who was league MVP, Kevin Johnson, who was considered a prolific player and scorer, okay, and Dan Marley and those boys. Then when he went out of retirement, went to retirement and came back, all right, he had lost to Orlando. Then ultimately they acquired Rodman, Sean Kent with Gary Payton, and those boys were no joke, all right? Uh, Carl Malone and John Stockton and those boys were no joke, and he beat them twice. So what I'm saying to you, and then you got to take the road to prosperity, the road to the finals, the, the Pistons, uh, prior to that, the Boston Celtics and other, I mean, Michael Jordan paid some dues before he got to where he got, bro. Okay, I understand that, Stephen A., but were they in a prime like Golden State is right now? No, they wasn't. So this notion that uh, Michael Jordan is so much better than LeBron, he never had to beat a team like Golden State to get to win the championship. Well, 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 well your point would be more valid if LeBron won. But LeBron got taken out in five games. And nobody's holding against him that he lost to Golden State. We recognize they stacked the deck. Nobody, There's nothing negative to say about LeBron James losing these finals. He showed up. He performed. He didn't wet the bed. He did his job. There's only but so much one human being can do against a juggernaut like that. We understand it. You're acting like we're, we're condemning LeBron because he lost to the Warriors. We're doing no such thing. We're doing no such thing. We understand he was at an, uh, at an unfair disadvantage. We get it. Okay, well, this notion that Michael Jordan is so much better than LeBron James. He's a better closer. Michael, He's a better Michael closer. Jordan, uh, well, when it's all said and done, who's who's Alonzo, you there? To look at stats. Well, listen, I would say this to you, Alonzo. The LeBron stats compare with anybody. But you know enough about basketball to know moments. Don't act like you're oblivious to it. You know that Kyrie is a closer. Kyrie is a guy that finishes. He's the score machine. You saw that 28-4 to run that Golden State went on in that second quarter. That's not happening against Michael Jordan. He's going to stop the bleeding at some point. It's just going to happen. Just You know, we saw it. We ain't talk. We ain't speculating. We saw him do it. And so when you look at it from that perspective, you have to respect it. We can appreciate the greatness of LeBron. You sound like somebody who's sensitive because you feel like LeBron is getting condemned too much, but you're not realizing the only condemnation that comes his way is when the subject of the greatest ever is the conversation. Under no other circumstances can LeBron James be insulted in any way. He's in peak condition. He embraces challenges and the responsibility that comes along with being a preeminent face, if not the preeminent iconic face of basketball the world over. And for the most part, he responds in admirable fashion. We have to give respect and credit and deference to LeBron in that regard, Alonzo. And I think we do it. And by the way, he's much better off the court than Michael Jordan is. You say that. But that's not exactly true because you don't. Everybody's not a public figure, Alonzo. Le- Michael Jordan does a lot of things behind the scenes that folks don't know about. LeBron just seems more socially conscious than Michael Jordan, and if you want to applaud him because of that, so be it. But you also got to take into account that we're living in different times, and we're living in different times, and it's the world of social media and beyond, and the tentacles that an individual has to reach the masses, where his cachet can't be inip- manipulated or dissipated in some regard by Joe Public out there has a profound impact on emboldening individuals to step out front. LeBron James has a freedom 
that Michael Jordan never had. And you got to take that into consideration as well. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! Before I get to Lonzo Ball and the Lakers, let me say this about this whole deal that I brought up. As you all know, Saul Canelo Alvarez is scheduled to fight Triple G, Gennady Golovkin, on Saturday, September 16th for the middleweight championship of the world. That is a fight of the ages. No question. Got a big fight coming up this weekend, too, by the way. Rematch of Andre Ward versus Sergey Kovalev. I'm picking Andre Ward to win again by decision, but I will openly confess I am very, very, very worried for him because Sergey Kovalev is a monster. I mean, he's a monster. He got power in both hands, and he's coming, and he feels he was robbed the first go-round. I thought he actually should have won that fight by a close decision. Andre Ward is brilliant, and I think he can outbox Kovalev but not, like, thoroughly. I mean, Kovalev can box and fight, and he's got power in both hands. I'm just scared if Andre gets hit. But I'm rooting for him, and I think he's going to win by decision because he's such a brilliant boxer. But he could get hit, y'all. He fell in the first fight. It could happen permanently in fight number two. So let's keep that in mind. But back to what I was talking about. The question that I wanted to ask you, Canelo Alvarez versus Triple G on September 16th is a fight for the ages. Now, according to reports, uh, the aimed date being made for Mayweather, Conor McGregor is August 26th. I can't see Floyd fighting in August. I just can't see it. He wants to own Cinco de Mayo. He makes a lot of money fighting fights in September and May, and that's what I assume he'll do. I can't see him fighting in August unless he wants it to be weeks before Canelo Alvarez versus Triple G. I I just don't see it. I see see the fight happening at some point in September, not August 26th. But who the hell knows? The thing is, if I had to buy one of the two fights, I got to admit to you, I would be buying Canelo versus Triple G. See, Mayweather and, 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 and McGregor, that's an exhibition. And I got news for you. There's a lot of people that believe they're going to outsell Canelo versus Triple G. And they might be right. Because as much trash as McGregor and Floyd talk, you got the black-white element, plus the trash talking, plus somebody would love to see one or the other go down. In my opinion, especially if it's Mayweather, I think you got a lot of people out there that want to see him fall. I mean, yeah. I guess it's possible. But look, there's a lot of Latinos out there. You know, and Triple G's got his own fan base. And if they're going to fight one another and this is an elite boxing match, you know, I don't know. I don't know who would win in the pay-per-view category. I don't know. In terms of sales, I don't know. It's an interesting discussion. I just know me. As much as I love seeing Mayweather fight and people trying to knock him knock him out and they can't touch him, I cannot I can I cannot ignore I, me personally. It's unfair for me to 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 answer this question cuz I'd buy both fights. That's me. But if I had to choose between one or the other, it would be Triple G over Canelo. I mean, it would be Triple G Canelo. Cuz I love boxing. And I don't think Conor McGregor is going to be able to touch Floyd. But that's me. 866-729-ESPN. That's 866-729-3776. We will get into Lonzo Ball because I got news for you, ladies and gentlemen. My sources are telling me there's serious, serious questions about whether or not the Los Angeles Lakers are going to take Lonzo Ball with the number two overall pick in next week's NBA draft. And then to top that off, it's one thing for my sources to be telling it to me from from, from when I was at the finals. But then for me to open the L.A. Times and to see my boy, my brother, Broderick Turner, who, by the way, y'all should all listen to when it comes to the NBA. Man knows what he's talking about. Fabulous writer, by the way. By the way. And good people. Love him. Read him every chance you get. He's got an article in today's paper. Very well connected. He's got an article in today's paper talking about some reservations on the part of the Los Angeles Lakers. All of that stuff. 
I mean, now that I, now that I see it from him, I know my sources were telling me the truth. So it's getting interesting in the land of the Lakers. Guess what? You're in the middle of the Stephen A. Smith Show podcast. Damn it, I mean it! There were reports, and I don't know how accurate those reports are, that Lonzo Ball was not in shape good enough shape for the first workout. I haven't checked into that. If that's true, he should be ashamed of himself. That's why I'm inclined to believe it's not true. It's too important for him to be a member of the Los Angeles Lakers for him not to come to a workout in shape. I just find that very, very hard to believe. But I will say this to you. There's a lot of momentum building for Josh Jackson to be the second overall pick by the Los Angeles Lakers. From what I'm being told, he's the best player in the draft. He's a tenacious defender, and he has the potential to be elite in that regard. Plus, he can put points on the board. That lends itself towards winning basketball games. I don't know what to make of it. Here's where it gets interesting for me. I don't think I would even be thinking about Lonzo Ball being the number two overall pick if I were not the Lakers. See, it's not just that he can play. It's that he's box office because he's got those guard skills where he can electrify a crowd and galvanize a team because of his distributing ability. He can handle and pass the rock. If I'm a if I'm if I'm. D'Angelo Russell, I'm wondering what the hell is going on. They used to say this about me. Just that we haven't seen it in his couple of years in the NBA. But Lonzo Ball being in L.A., I mean, Magic Johnson and Rob Palenka got a hard job now. Because if you don't take Lonzo Ball, L.A.'s not going to be happy. And and by the way, this can't be Rob Palenka's pick. This has to be Magic's pick. Because it's the number two overall pick. It has to be Magic Johnson. It has to be Magic Johnson. It can, I don't want to hear, listen, I know a lot of people, whether it's in the agent community or or, or, or or the NBA community, a lot of people have negative things to say about Rob Palenka. I'm not one of them. I think he knows what he's talking about. I think he's knowledgeable about, you know, the, the game because he was a a really good agent. I get all of that. He has no experience as a GM. It's a new world for him. That's fair. But I think that you just got a lot of people that may want to hate on them because they don't like him. Here's what I'm saying. I don't hate Rob Palenka. Matter of fact, I like him. I don't have a problem with Rob Palenka. I think he's a novice at this job because he obviously never did it before. But he does know how the game works. And who knows, he might be a good deal, but we all know he's in that position because of Kobe. Fair enough. Here's my point. This year's number two overall pick has to have magic. I don't want to hear a word from Rapalinka. Not a word. Not a word. I don't give a damn what he thinks about the number two overall pick. I want to hear and see from one man. One. And that man is Irvin Magic Johnson. I'm not talking about anything else. I can talk to Rob Palenka about the Lakers and building the franchise. We can talk to Rob Palenka about moving forward and every other player on the roster. We can talk to him about free agency after July 1st and all of that stuff. But let me tell you something right now so we can get this out of the way clearly. Next Thursday, June 22nd, I want to see one face. I want to hear from one man. And that man is Irvin Magic Johnson. Want to hear about no damn Rob Palenka? Oh, no. I don't even want to hear from Luke Walton. I don't want to hear from Jeannie Buss. I don't want to hear from anybody. Oh, one man. One. And that man is Irvin Magic Johnson. Because this pick is that important. I'm telling y'all, when I hear folks sit out here and they talk about Josh Jackson, I saw him at Kansas. I thought he was pretty damn good. But I got people telling me this kid, Josh Jackson. Yo, Stephen A., he's a rough rider. Stephen A., he's a stout defender. You remember the way Pippen and Kobe and Jordan would shut people down? That's Josh Jackson. 
Now, damn it, unfortunately, because of that black cat running around New York named Phil Jackson, we can't get a luck. The Knicks can't get any luck in having a top two or three pick. So they're not a part of this conversation. They're not a part of this conversation. They're at number eight. We'll get to them later. I'm hoping somebody like Tatum or Monk out of Kentucky. Tatum's at Duke. I'm hoping somebody like that falls to the Knicks. But you're the Lakers. You got the number two overall pick. And if Danny H and those boys are going to take Markel Fultz out of Washington, that means you're the Lakers. You have a decision between Josh Jackson, De'Aaron Fox, and Lonzo Ball. And by the way, this kid De'Aaron Fox can't really shoot. He's not a shooter. Gets to the basket real well. Average 16 points a game at Kentucky. Got a lot of heart. Plays with a lot of athleticism, heart, and emotion. And every time he's went up against Lonzo Ball, he's giving it to him. Dropped 39 on him in the NCAA tournament. Lonzo had 10. That's pretty damn bad. But we're not going to hold that against him. We're just going to talk about the talent. And we're going to talk about leadership. And we're going to talk about heart. We're going to talk about galvanizing the troops. We're going to talk about all of these other things. The number two overall pick is too important. I don't want to hear from Rob Palenka. I don't want to hear him. I don't want to see him. I'm not knocking Rob Palenka in any way. But for this draft, next Thursday night, I need to see Irvin Magic Johnson. Because if I'm a Laker fan, if I'm a member of Laker Nation, if I'm a dude that walks around pridefully wearing that purple and gold in support of the Lakers, I don't want to hear no damn Rob Palenka. Not not, not, not June 22nd. Any day after, fine. Any day after, fine. But next Thursday, for the number two overall pick, I need justification no matter who you select. And there is only one person I am going to believe and give the benefit of the doubt to. And his name is Irvin Magic Johnson. If I see anybody else, anybody, I'm going to question what the hell has been done. And so will the rest of Laker Nation. That's just a sample of what you'll hear on the Stephen A. Smith Show. Weekdays at 1 p.m. Eastern on Sirius XM Channel 80 and the ESPN app.